Hey, welcome back. My name is Jay Oza. I teach, mentor, and coach people give winning high-stakes speeches so that they can succeed at a job interview, business or sales meeting, or even at a conference in front of a large people. And also soon I'll be an author as I expect to release a book by end of uh, September titled Winning Speech Moments. How to achieve your objective with anyone, anytime, anywhere. So we'll talk more about that in some future videos as I get closer to the launch. Today I want to give you a sales tip. And before I give you the sales tip, I want to tell you something that you can learn. Not just from selling. That's given. If you're in sales, you always are in a learning mode when you are selling. But there is a lot more you can learn when you are being sold. Think about that. And you can analyze somebody's sales process and salesmanship. So let me give you an example uh, that I ran into actually last night. So I took my son to this uh, SAT prep place because, you know, we'd like him to get ready for his SAT. It's that time of uh, when your child is in high school, you start looking and you get scared like, oh my God, is this score going to be good enough to get into the college he wants to? At this point, I just want his score to be just <laughs> respectable so he can get into a college. I'm not <laughs> worrying about, oh, is he going to get into Harvard, Yale? Or it's up to him. Who knows? Uh, but so we realized that he needs help. So we went to see this place. They gave him a test and we expected his that that his scores weren't going to be good and they're going to really try to get us to commit to the program. Okay, so, you know, we, I'm going to spare you all the details here and we go through it like, you know, he needs help here, here. They really make it sound like, like my son can't, you know, he basically hasn't done anything in the last uh, uh, nine grades that he has attended. It's almost like it was a total waste, but they're going to fix it. They're going to give him the skills that he needs so that he can really do well on that SAT test which of course I don't believe, okay? So that's my belief. SAT is just a test, and do I want my son to become an expert test taker, or do I want him to learn about different subjects so that he can decide what he has passion in, okay? And that he wants to pursue, and he wants to pursue history. But anyway, so we get to the end, and there are one program that they want us to get. You can tell, because the way they start discounting is you pay up front, and that came out to about $8,000 after all the discounts, okay? Then they, of course, the one that they don't want you to pick is the one that's on a monthly one. Because now they remove all the discounts. So the monthly rate becomes quite high. So you're like, okay, I don't know if I want to pay monthly. Let's go pay for the whole thing. So that's what you can tell that they are leading towards. Okay. At this point, I'm not saying anything. I just want to hear them out, see what they have to say, you know, because now they've done their job. And you can tell how somebody has, it's sort of like flowing, you know, you're kind of flowing the sales uh, salesman. So they try to start with the niceties, get you start talking, get comfortable, check. Then they go into like, you know, what are your expectations? Boom. Then they show you like, oh my God, to meet those expectations, you got work to do. Oh my God. And my wife was on the phone, by the way. So she's like, oh my God, this is really, you know, she just bought it hook, line, and sinker with the pitch these people were giving us and then they get you the amount and my wife was pretty much sold on it but I asked one important question you know I told her look I'm not sold I never was trying to be you know deceptive in any way I said look I'm not convinced this program is going to work for my son you know I don't want to argue about their program that's their program they're defending their program I'm trying to sell them that their program isn't going to work for my son and they really can't answer that, right? That's something they don't know. So they're trying to get me that, you know, in college, this SAT is important. I'm like, you know, I don't know if I agree with it, but I'll take your word for it. SAT is important, all that. So anyway, th there's a lot of salesmanship and conversation we're having. But I kept on telling him that, that I don't know if my son is committed. So I've given him a very important information. My concern is not about your program. I give that to him. I said, look, you have that. You've got a great program. You've been there for many, many years. I'm not going to argue with that. You have it. That's why we're here. 
And in fact, it kind of helped uh, what buttressed my case even more is because my son said, you've got a tremendous website and we were really impressed with your program. So they knew that we came here, came there for a reason. But then I asked them something very important during the end. I said, well, we would like just to make sure a trial period, a discounted trial period, just to see that my son is comfortable. And at the end of it, if he's not happy, we'll just end it, no questions asked, okay? You're, because you may not like my son, right? It's both ways. My son may not be right for your program, and he this program may not be right for him. And the only way to find out is to have a, a trial for a week where he comes in for three times. You know, twice may not be enough, three times, and at the end of that, we'll have a pretty good idea whether this is the right program. If it's not, we just tell you, sorry, it's not going to work out. Or you can tell us, you know, your son came in, but it doesn't look like we're going to be able to produce the results. No questions asked, and that's fine. She wouldn't go for that. This uh, salesperson wouldn't go for that. She said, oh, we don't do that. So at that point, I said, great. We have to think about it. That's it. That's what I wanted. They don't have a trial. Now think about it. This is some, something where you need to know whether there's a chemistry or not. Why wouldn't they have a trial? Wouldn't this be something that other people probably are asking them? And then I talked to her the next day, and that was today, and still the trial part never came up. And I just, at this point, I'm going to just bought more time. I said, let me discuss it with my wife. And most likely, I'm going to tell them that we're not going to go for this. We're going to look for some other program that works for us. Because at the end, it has to really work for my son. But the point I want to raise here is that after that, I asked myself, what did this person do wrong? She did everything right. She was very friendly. She basically addressed the needs. All of that was fine. So there was an urgency that she showed. But I think one of the things that salespeople don't do well, which I don't understand why, because you can tell that there is an underlying motive. What she should have said was, look, initially you need to try this out. We don't know whether it's going to work, whether your son's going to work. Why don't we do this? Try it just for one month. After one month, if you don't have it, and we'll give it to you at a discount because we believe in this program so much. This is normally what we would charge, but since you're not sure, we'll give you a discount. We'll just give it to you for half price. If you like it, you'll get back to the whole price. And if you decide that's not acceptable, then no questions asked. you got to be standing behind your product. And if you stand behind your product, let the customer dictate how they want it. If you can't do it, then you probably don't think your product is going to work. That flexibility is very important. If salespeople don't have that flexibility, they don't add any value to you as a customer. And that's what I saw here, that if you're in sales, if you don't have flexibility to make those changes, to make the customer comfortable and saying, okay, I'll give it to you. And if you're in a situation, if you're working for a company that doesn't provide you that flexibility, then you're, you're at a big disadvantage because the customers are just going to leave. If, if it's like, if the customer is like myself, I need that flexibility. If I don't see any flexibility, I'm not working with you because I'm not sold on you, whether the, what you're giving me, especially when it's a service-oriented type of thing, it's going to work. I need some I need some proof that it's working, and I don't want to deal with the hassle of like, okay, now I have to. If you really believe in your product, just say, look, here's what I'm going to do to you. Here's what I'm going to do because I really care about your son. I really think he needs help. I'm going to give you a one month at a discounted rate and after the end of the month, I'm just going to charge you just for a month. None of these things like I'm going to take your credit card and then just keep billing you. One month, we'll talk after that. If you give me your feedback, and if after that you don't like it, we'll end it. That would have really helped. She didn't do that. She didn't do that, and now I'm not going back. And that's it. Because I don't think in sales you only get one shot. There's another thing. In sales you get one shot, especially when I'm dealing with salespeople. If you're not using your best shot right in the front, you don't get a second chance because you're in sales. Sales, you only get one shot to close the deal. And if you don't, if you blow it, sales over as far as I'm concerned. So think about this, that when you're in a, 
uh, sales mode, you're obviously going to learn from what the customer is asking. But be on the other side. Be on the other side where you're the customer. And how is the other person selling you? Go through all the steps the person is going through. And at what point is the salesperson, make the salesperson uncomfortable and see how that salesperson reacts. That's when the real sale is done. And as soon as I made this uh, salesperson uncomfortable, the sales kind of sputtered. And at that point, we just said, you know, we thanked her. At that point, you can say that the, the role's reversed. I sold her and said, look, I appreciate your time. I appreciate all the work you've done. I really like your program. But we're going to have to go home and think more about this. And, and that's it. That's it. The sales pretty much ended right there. And today I told her, Listen, I need more time, but when people are buying time, that means they're not ready to make a decision. There's still some issues here, and that's it. Okay, so I just want you to think about it, that it's not just good enough to be a good salesman, but also it's important to know how the salesman treats you as a customer, and what you can learn from that is also very important. It will make you a better salesperson. All right, so think about this, and let me know if you have any questions, suggestions, ideas, or even criticism. You might say, oh, no, that's not the right way to do it. Maybe this is a terrible way. So I'm open to hearing your ideas. And as usual, thank you for watching, and good luck with your next sale.